Parthenogenesis literally means a virgin birth. In biological terms, it simply means an unfertilized ovum will give rise to a fully functioning adult. Discovered in the 18th century by Charles Bonnet, Parthenogenesis is a progressively evolutionary strategy that some organisms like honeybees have employed to maintain a colony. At the cellular level, the difference between parthenogenesis and sexual reproduction is that in the latter, meiosis is followed by fusion of male and female gametes. In parthenogenesis, meiosis is changed so that one particular set of chromosomes is transferred in a non-random fashion. The root problem of parthenogenesis in vertebrates is that haploid eggs are useless. The egg cell must either remain diploid or somehow be able to become diploid again by itself. This is achieved in several ways. The simplest way is just to stop meiosis from happening. This is called apomixis. And the oocyte is then produced just by mitosis, skipping over recombination and segregation of chromosomes, leading to clones. Another way is to double the number of chromosomes before meiosis happens. So, when the ploidy halves, the result is still a diploid oocyte. Again, clones are produced here because recombination and segregation take place between the identical homologous chromosomes, not strange ones. The most common way to maintain diploid levels is automixis. This is when meiosis occurs and the resultant haploid oocyte either duplicates its genome or fusion with one of the polar bodies occurs. This way obviously does not produce clones. A species can be obligately parthenogenic, that is, they can't reproduce sexually at all, or facultatively parthenogenic, that is, they have the ability to switch between sexual and parthenogenic reproduction. Honeybees are facultatively parthenogenic and have an intricate social organization. There are three social classes, queen bees, worker bees, and drone bees. The queen bee, as the name entails, holds the superior position in the colony. The queen bee lays all the eggs in the colony, being the only bee with a set of completely developed ovaries and having lifelong fertility. After only one mating flight, where the queen bee mates with a couple of male drone bees, she stores the sperm to later fertilize some of the eggs. The eggs that the queen chooses to have fertilized develop into female worker bees and the eggs that develop without fertilization produce male drone bees. Due to the high maintenance of both the colony and its products, that is honey, most of the bees in a hive are female worker bees. These worker bees carry on a magnitude of different tasks, but not reproduction. This is reserved only for the queen. The male drone bees just hang around the hive when they are not performing their sole task, which is to mate with the queen bee. The best example of parthenogenesis is in Hymenopterans, the taxonomic order to which honeybees, wasps and ants belong. Any ant or bee or wasp male got there by parthenogenesis. Hence, Hymenopterans are haplodiploid, that is, male comes from unfertilized eggs, female from fertilized eggs. This standard parthenogenesis is called Arhinotoki. Arhinotoki permits honeybees to maintain their social structure where only a few male drones need to be present at any time. If the male drones were to die after mating, which by the way happens very very often, the queen bee has the ability to create more drones by choosing not to fertilize a few of her eggs. Do note that she still needs the sperm to create a diploid female worker. There are even more extreme types. Worker ants of a couple of ant species can lay eggs which give rise to other females without fertilization. This specific type of haplodiploid parthenogenesis is called thylitoki. So, a thylitokis population has no males. The reason why thylitoki is interesting is because of sex determination. For a hymenopteran to be a female, the ovum must become diploid. Hence, why they are normally fertilized. The easiest way to explain thylitoki is to say that during or after meiosis, 
two haploid nuclei fuse together forming a diploid egg without a need for a sperm so to summarize parthenogenesis is divided based on the end product arenotoki which involves the creation of fatherless males thylitoki which is the creation of fatherless females there is a third type as well termed deuterotoki or amphitoki which is the fabrication of both males and females by unmated females now this is very rare and thought to be exhibited by taylor ants a lot more research needs to be done to prove if this is indeed 